two peace protesters as we continue this broadcast from Stockholm, Sweden. Institutions like the Nobel Prize have helped link Sweden's international reputation to peace, um, uh, to peace and reconciliation. But few people know Sweden is also one of the world's top exporters of weapons. Sweden is among the world's top arms exporters in per capita terms. Its clients include the United States and Britain, with shipments more than doubling since 2000. Annika Spalda is an activist with Avrusta, which is called Disarm in Swedish. It aims to stop Swedish arms exports to countries violating human rights. The group is part of the Swedish Christian peace network, OFHOG. Annika joins me here in Stockholm. And uh, we are also joined by another activist. Um, uh, who will talk about her work as well. Um, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, my name is uh, Katis Laska, and I'm also part of the anti-militaristic peace movement UFUG. And UFUG means? It's, uh, it's an old word for mischief in Swedish, and it's also meaning um, disobedience to uh, power structures and yeah, not obeying laws that we think are unjust. I'd like to talk to both of you uh, about your protest in October. Annika, why don't you begin? What did you do? Well, since we feel that the peace movement has been working for so many years to stop these arms sales, uh, which also violate our own guidelines, for example, that we sell we weapons to, to countries at war and to countries who ser seriously violate human rights, and still these sales just uh, grow bigger and bigger. So we feel that we as ordinary citizens has a responsibility to act then and to physically try to, to stop these weapons from being shipped off. And the, so apart from more traditional uh, political methods, we also then use disarmament actions, which means that we, with an ordinary hammer, uh, starts the disarmament by disabling parts of weapons or weapons so that they can't be used to kill or hurt uh, anybody. So in October, we went into uh, two different factories in Sweden, uh, both part of the old uh, Bofors company, which is now one of them owned by BAE Systems. Uh, BA meaning British uh, Aerospace. Yes, uh, Europe's biggest weapons company. And Bofors is where Alfred Nobel actually established the weapons industry. It was, yes, in Karlskoga. Bofors, for our uh, audience around the world, is spelled B-O-F-O-R-S, if you're looking for it on a map. Mm -hmm. Yes, I And uh, the other group went into uh, Saab Bofors Dynamics, which is another uh, company owned by uh, Swedish-owned. Well, that Saab is interesting, Saab. because we think of Saab, well, General Motors owns mm -hmm. Saab in the United States, the automaker, mm -hmm. and Ford owns Volvo, another mm -hmm. Swedish company. Uh, both they are trying to sell. Yes. But Saab here is not the automaker because it was bought by General Motors, but just the weapons manufacturer? Yes. So I'm now is Sweden's biggest weapons manufacturer, and not, not uh, all Swedes know that either. They do, among other things, the fighter jet, the Gripen, and also grenade launchers that we sell now uh, to U.S. Uh, used in Iraq. What are these grenade like launchers the Carl called? Gustav and the AT-4, and also a GPS-guided, newly developed uh, grenade called Excalibur. And these are used in Iraq? Um, yes. Are. are there soldiers in Iraq Sweden. from Sweden? No, no, Sweden's not part of the, <laughs> the war in Iraq, and most Swedes uh, strongly, were strongly against the, the invasion of but Iraq. But soldiers are part of the war in Afghanistan. Yes, in Afghanistan they are. Uh, so specifically, I'd like you to talk about your actions. Mm -hmm. um, Katis Laska, talk about what happened in October. What did you do? Well, we were uh, an action group. Uh, a part of UFUG, and we went into uh, two weapon factories at the same night. Uh, two persons went into Saab Bofors uh, Dynamics in Eskilstuna, where they make, for example, the 84 and the Carl Gustav uh, grenade launchers, and they disarmed uh, about 20 uh, Carl Gustav grenade launchers. And, uh, and when you say disarmed uh, 20 Carl Gustav grenade launchers, what do you mean disarmed? Uh, they disabled them so 
well, to prevent them to being used in wars so they can't be used now. And what do you mean disabled? How did they do this? Um, they did it by um, using a hammer, making um, scraps inside the grenade launchers. They scraped inside yeah. the grenade launcher. Yeah. And so uh, it's very important that, uh, um, well, there's very much details in those uh, launchers, so they have to be perfect. So it's enough just to scrape a bit mm -hmm. to disable them. And then me and another person uh, went into the BA Systems Bofors factory in Karlskoga. British aerospace. Yes, and where we uh, disabled some parts for uh, howitzers going to India. How did you disable them? We also used hammers uh, to scrape and to, yeah, hammer them. Have you gone to trial for this? Yes, uh, the two of us going into British Aerospace uh, Bofors, uh, when had a trial in the beginning of November, uh, but now it's on appeal for uh, another trial. And were you sentenced for that action? Yeah, we were sentenced to three months in prison and— Will you be going to prison soon? Um, well, first we will have the, the, the other trial, and then probably we will be sentenced to prison, say, mm -hmm. prison again. Annika, your role in all of this? Yes, we decided that I'd be outside at this night and having phone contact with both the groups and also receiving material that they filmed in, in Eskilstuna, which you can actually see on, on YouTube, for example, uh, where, where they are uh, disabling these grenade launchers uh, and put that on our website. And then I met uh, some journalists the day after and then later tried to go in myself, or I went in myself at uh, BAE Systems so to try and continue the disarmament, but I was then arrested before I had disarmed anything. Did you tell, did you tell the authorities yourself what you had done? Um, this seems to be a tradition of plowshares activists and other countries, from the United States to Britain, is telling them, uh, calling them up and saying, yes. you've done this. Yes. Uh, I mean, we feel very strongly about nonviolence and openness, um, and we always tell exactly yeah, what we have done and take responsibility for that. And those in Eskilstuna had the time actually to call the police when they felt they, ha they were ready with the disarmament work. Uh, and uh, Katis and Pelle were uh, discovered before they had that opportunity. But that's important for us to take responsibility. Uh, and also in the following trials to be able to, to argue our case and with the goal of sometime having these laws changed that, that permit this, this exportation going on. What is the response of the Swedish population? I think many people must be surprised listening to or watching you both today. Uh, I mean, we are going to see the celebration of the Nobel Peace Prize um, uh, in honor of Alfred Nobel here in Sweden. Uh, and here you are, peace activists, taking on what may surprise people to be the second largest uh, weapons exporter per capita mm -hmm. in the world, Sweden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think many people just doesn't know about it. Not well, Swedish citizens doesn't know about Sweden being one of the top ten uh, largest arm producers in the world. Uh, but then, yeah, there's also these laws that, um, yeah, that permits the the weapons export and um, and pro yeah and um, uh, stop people from protesting against it, because then they will get fines and be put into prison. We have received a lot of support. Uh, we have this web page where you can also sign an appeal, uh, where it says that I support this kind of nonviolent disarmament actions, and I, I, I see them as necessary in this situation. And we have uh, at least a couple of hundred people and several organizations who have signed that. And uh, so I think uh, it's uh, a lot of people feel it uh, quite radical action need, needs to be taken, uh, also since with this government and because uh, there will be um, next year probably a new uh, a proposal for new regulations uh, guidelines for the weapons export, which which then risk to be much more liberal than those that we have today. So it's important to act. We feel also at this moment. Your website. Uh, that's ufug.org. Spell it. Or, <laughs> or I say, uh, avrusta.se. 
A-V-R-U-S-T-A dot S-E. And we will link to it at democracynow.org. Um, <laughs> Annika Spalda, I want to thank you very much for being with us, and Katislaska, thank you. Uh, we will follow your case and see what happens on appeal. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. When we come back, we're going to New York to speak with Jeremy Scahill about the latest news, the Blackwater Guards at uh, Nisser Square. And then we're going to come back here to Stockholm to speak with an Afghan reporter. Uh, he got political asylum here in Sweden. And we'll talk about the situation for refugees.